Welcome back, dear viewers. We're still here on Nile Cruise from Beit El Kritlia in the heart of Cairo. And uh, Egypt is predominantly perceived as the land of the pharaohs. However, while of immense significance, of course, naturally, the pharaonic era is only one component of, each, of Egypt's rich and uh, diverse history. Uh, there is the uh, Coptic histories, there is the Islamic history, the Greco-Roman, and, 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 and you name it. So we are here in um, one of the main Islamic monuments uh, in uh, Cairo, and uh, we have with us uh, now uh, Muhrail Miled, uh, member of the Egyptian Association for Protecting uh, Heritage. Muhrail, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for coming in. Um, we are in a very special place here today, and um, it's part of the cultural heritage of Egypt, which is traced back to centuries and, and, and different eras and civilizations until present day. What, if we're going to talk about the forms of the heritage in Egypt, what can you tell us? According to the UNESCO, there are seven main sites here in Egypt you must see when you come here. The first one is Memphis. Memphis nowadays, it is from Giza, Sa'ara, and Dahshur. There you can see the development of the tombs of the ancient Egyptian people, you know. You can see the development from the Mastaba till the first step pyramid of King Jusser in Saqqara. Then we can see the true pyramidal shape and the pyramids of Giza. Uh, the second uh, site is the historic Cairo, where we are here now. Cairo was founded by Gauhar um, Sukali in the first Fatimite period, it was the capital of Egypt. Its name was Al Qahira, the victorious, in the 10th century AD. So in Cairo, here we have a lot of Islamic monuments and Coptic monuments. Islamic monuments here, we can see mosques, we can see mausoleums, domes, schools, and we have the very famously known in Moise Street. We have the area of old Cairo with its churches. We have also Khan Khalili, the world known bazaar. Uh, the, second, uh, the third uh, site we have is Sebes. Nowadays it's Luxor. Mm. Luxor is known to be um, an open air museum. We have two sides or two banks of the Nile. The east bank we have Luxor Temple. Uh, and Karnak Temple, the second, uh, the west side, in the ancient Egyptian beliefs, they believe the east side for the living, it is the living area, and the west side is the area of the dead. So we have funerary temples. We have the funerary uh, temple of Hatshepsut, Deir al-Bahari. We have Valley of the Kings and Valley of the Queens. The fourth uh, site you should see is the Nubian temples. So we are talking about Abu Simbel and Philae Island. Uh, the UNESCO launched a salvage campaign for this area from the Nile flood after the, uh, the construction of uh, Lake uh, Nasser. Mm. So uh, it changed their places slightly, but they are well preserved now. The fifth uh, site is Valley of the Whales in El Fayyum. Uh, the sixth site, we have St. Catherine site there uh, in Sinai. And the seventh site is Abu Mina site in Alexandria. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Uh, those, of course, are the seven sites that UNESCO said you must visit Egypt, when, yes. when you come to Egypt. Uh, Mohrail, uh, uh, of course, our duty is to preserve uh, our heritage and, and to teach it to our um, uh, uh, younger generations. And you're a member of the Egyptian Association for Protecting Heritage. So I guess there's no one better to ask than how do we do that? The association's first aim is to spread the popular awareness of the importance of the Egyptian heritage. If we know what we have, we will preserve it very well. So we are trying to, you know, spread the awareness, go to colleges, schools, uh, social media is number one. We are working on it. Uh, the, the group on Facebook, the site, we are using all of this to spread the awareness. 
So can we say that um, with the increase of spreading of the awareness and the urge to spread awareness, that would help protect the Egyptian heritage from threats? And if there are, what kind of threats are we talking about? I think that the number one is not knowing what we have, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, if we don't know what we have, we sure we can't preserve it very well. So, yeah, this is number one. Uh, of course, uh, um, uh, next to uh, the, you know, the natural uh, environments, events, you know, uh, the underground uh, water do some stuff in some places. So. Uh, these You're are talking in terms of infrastructure and, um, and, and natural disasters. Yes. That, but, but then uh, these are like not a human kind of... Yes, of, of but, but what is our role and what could be the other plans that uh, whether the organizations or institutions or even government can take to make sure that it does not get harmed? Because I, it, has sur it has survived thousands of yes, years, you yes. know? I think preserving it or uh, supervising it well will help us to... Uh, regain control on it or still have the control on these places. Right. So, so Mohrail, you, you told us about the first step. Allow me to stay with you uh, on that point. Yes, we totally agree. The first step is awareness. After awareness, what do we do uh, we, to, to preserve our heritage? We should start events to uh, encourage, uh, encourage people to come to these events, you know, teaching new, uh, new people mainly from the Yas to teach the, uh, the other generations. So uh, yes, we spread awareness by doing events, doing workshops, uh, uh, just like, uh, you know, for the handcrafts uh, and... Hmm. Well, you're a young lady and um, um, the young generation constitutes a large percentage of the population in Egypt. And um, how do you get the young generation like yourself um, be engaged and interested in taking part of this because it's also their heritage and they're in the future um, with regard, of course, to the use of technology and social media. And, and let's talk about the different means that are outside of the box to help attract the younger generation to take part in this. I don't know how exactly we can do this because, you know... From your perspective, from, as a young lady. Um, from the trainings and the events I went, all the YAS come to these events are from archaeological or uh, historical faculties. So they are coming for their university. Mm -hmm. But the people who, their field away from this, they don't come. How we can attract them, I don't know. We started by the social media to attract them. This How do you do that? Do they have like certain page groups? Do you have certain uh, yes, uh, aware? I mean, that's why I said that social media is a very strong tool and um, necessarily doesn't necessarily need, mean that you have to be directly working or involved in this field, but like someone from the outside uh, of this field would be interested still to take part. Yes, the association established its first team uh, formed by the YAS to make uh, some rituals in the group. We have uh, uh, every Sunday we, we put some posters about archaeological places, historical places with them. We, we use uh, the easy words and the, wor the, the way you can talk to the YAS and assemble people. Uh, we are working on this by the social media. They also are um, making some trips and events to the historical places because we are launching a magazine for the journey of the Holy Family. Mm -hmm. uh, so they were doing, yes, uh, journeys and trips each week uh, to a station of the journey of the Holy Family. Yes. Um, Mohrail, what corporations, uh, what organizations uh, do you cooperate with in, in your association, the Association for the Preservation of Heritage? And uh, like the government, uh, the civil society, local uh, organizations, international Sometimes I, I, know, I know that there are embassies that are involved, like for instance in this area, the British Embassy took part in preserving this place. Uh, actually, this, uh, this information, uh, I don't have that mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm, I'm just a member. But I'm sure the head can, can tell you more about mm -hmm. these. If, okay. if, if as, as a person who is uh, taking part in this organization, um, um, what kind of events have you uh, done recently? Do you have any plans for upcoming events, as you've mentioned earlier, or activities? 
Yes, we are working on the group and social media. We are also working on the magazine. These are our main concerns right now. Mm -hmm to uh, spread awareness and to attract people first. When we attract them, we will start doing some events. Of course, Mohrail, you, you're from uh, uh, a relatively young generation uh, as well, but I want to ask you about the younger generations, uh, the, the, the children now, the school children. Do you see them now more or less interested in, in knowing about our heritage and why and what can we do about that? I think, yes, they are more interested. Um, as a trainee in the Islamic Art Museum, as an English guide, I have seen a lot of uh, schools arranging uh, some uh, uh, traps for their children uh, or their students. They were contacting with the museum. Uh, the museum provided them uh, guides to help them. So yes, they are interested. Uh, mm. Are they interested more than the foreigners? Because um, some people feel that the foreigners are more interested in Actually, the Egyptian yes. heritage. The or is it because they have to pay money interested. to come and, and, and visit Egypt? So that's why, you know, we know we have these places, so we know that it's ours and we can always go and see yes. them. But it's different when you have a plan and a limited time in another I country. I have worked with foreigners and made tours. Yes, they are definitely more interested. Even if they are coming for a special purpose, they are interested also to see everything. Everything. I had a tour with a PhD student uh, in uh, mu uh, museum science, you know, mythology, and she was interested to see everything, not, even not, uh, it's not mus uh, museums. Mm. That's very interesting. Yes, Mohorail, so is there a special form of cultural heritage that you focus on when you introduce to younger generations, or do you introduce to them all uh, uh, our rich, diverse history, and what are they interested in the most from what you can see, the younger generations? Okay, so uh, when we can introduce uh, to, uh, to the younger generation, we try to speak uh, in chronological order, mm. you know, if, mm. if I will talk... And a lot of pictures, because I know children will be interested yes, in of pictures course. and uh, yeah. animation and stuff like that, yes. Yes, if we are going to talk, we will start from the beginning and we will go civilization, ancient Egyptian civilization, Greek-Roman, Coptic, Islamic, mm. that would be nice and easy for them to yes. understand. Right. Yes. Right. Well, I'm what, what, what are they m m more interested in? Sorry, yes, me. It's okay. Uh, more uh, ancient Egyptian civilization, of course, of course, yes. Right. Of course, I was, I was hoping you'd say that too. Um, Horail uh, Milad, member of the Egyptian Association for Protecting Heritage, thank you very much for joining us on Night Cruise. So thank welcome. you and good luck. It's my pleasure. Thank, thank you very you. much, Horail. And stay tuned. We are still here at the Geir Anderson Museum. In the heart of Cairo, is it the heart of Cairo? Say the Zainab district, one of the yeah. oldest districts yeah. or neighborhoods here, yeah. and this is a very special place. A lot of people were not aware of before today. I'm sure. Stay tuned.